Hello guys, this is Jay Kladek again. Uh, with all the interest that uh, the retirement of the space shuttle has been causing, I felt I would take this time to kind of take a trip down memory lane and uh, showcase a history of the space shuttle program in model form. What you see in front of you are three model kit boxes uh, dating back from the late 1970s. These are all from Revell USA, located in Venice, California. Um, when they were in Venice, California, anyway. And they are all of uh, Space Shuttle Enterprise. The one at the top is the Space Shuttle with the 747 in 1144 scale. The one in the center is Enterprise with booster rockets, also on 1144 scale. And the model at the bottom is just the standard orbiter in 1144 scale without either of the two. The orbiter kits in all three cases are essentially identical, although the one with the 747 does come with a long nose probe, and it also doesn't include any payload bay details. Uh, the booster rocket one, it's a complete orbiter, but I don't believe it has the space lab, whereas the one at the bottom does have the space lab. Based on my research, near as I can tell, the one with the 747 was the very first issue, and I believe the orbiter came out not long after the orbiter by itself. The one with the booster rockets came out about a year later. Uh, these were all released circa 1977-78 time frame. Uh, the 747, of course, is used to transport the space shuttle from California to the launch site at Kennedy Space Center. But its first role was uh, used for the glide testing of Enterprise at, at Edwards Air Force Base. Enterprise performed five flights there, uh, three with the tail cone on, two with the tail cone off, and it performed pretty successfully. Of course, Enterprise never flew in space. Um, reason for that was is it was determined it would cost less money to rebuild uh, Static Test Article 99, a orbiter airframe built for vibration test for uh, vibration and failure testing into a flight orbiter, and that would cost less than building Enterprise into a flight orbiter. And Static Test Article 99 became Challenger. And so Enterprise, unfortunately, was relegated to being just a display bird. Although she was used for some form of testing over the years of her operations. Okay, moving on. I'll showcase another example of a space shuttle model kit from the Enterprise era of the late 1970s. The kit you see in front of you is uh, from a company called U.S. Airfix. U.S. Airfix was a short-lived model company, and all they did was they imported the original Airfix kits from England and uh, just repackaged them in uh, their own style of boxes. Uh, one thing about U.S. Airfix is they did this trend of wanting to showcase the model kit rather than showcase any exciting box art in the forms of paintings. There was kind of a trend at the time that you show the actual product rather than any painting so you don't mislead people. So this is an example of that. Uh, the Airfix kits from England by comparison had some rather nice looking box art. And this does contrast quite a bit with the Revell kits that I showed you earlier. Plastic-wise, these were identical to the Airfix kits, and uh, after U.S. Airfix folded, uh, MPC, based out of Michigan at the time, imported the Airfix tooling and put their own boxes on them. Uh, an example of that was a really nice-looking... Columbia Boxing in honor of the first mission. I do not have an example of that in my collection, but 
it is a pretty one. Even though I collect a lot of shuttle models, there are a few gaps in my collection I have yet to plug. Uh, here are four more examples of shuttle model kits from the 1970s, specifically 1979. And in 1979, the uh, James Bond film Moonraker came out. And both Ravel and Airfix decided to capitalize on the fact that they had relatively accurate space shuttle model kit molds. Uh, so they both acquired licenses from, from Albert Cubby Broccoli to do kits. Ravel did two kits in the form of the Orbiter Only and Space Shuttle with solid rocket boosters and external tank. If you look closely you'll note, I don't know how well you can see it, that the Ravel kit was done as Moonraker 5 while the Airfix kit above was done as Moonraker 6. So technically one could say that they didn't do exactly the same space shuttle, except for all intents and purposes, they are the same space shuttle. The Ravel kits were available on the North American market and in some other markets internationally, whereas the Airfix kit was available in England and also in Canada. Um, I acquired the Airfix kit from a buddy of mine who bought it when he was in the U.S. Army and based in Italy back in the early 80s. Now the one in the lower corner that says Alien Invader was a rather un unusual idea of marketing on Ravel's part. It is a space shuttle molded in black plastic and it had three flashing Christmas lights, as it were, batteries contained in the payload bay, and you turned on the lights by moving the body flap. It was an interesting idea. I don't know how well these sold. Um, I bought one of these a few years ago because it was something really interesting. But I kind of regard it as along the same lines as a as some of those late 1970s uh, van kits that you might see where if anything came out in movie form that had models done of it then they also did uh, then they also did vans of course ironically I have, nobody to my knowledge has ever done a uh, space shuttle themed model van but give it time I'm sure somebody will if they have the idea the box art on the Airfix kit is actually based on the uh, box art for the original Airfix space shuttle kit, uh, featuring the orbiter coming off the solid rocket boosters and the tanks like that. Um, very nice box art, very nice kit. Uh, I'll probably never build it uh, now that I've built my big 172 scale Moonraker stack, but at least I got these in my collection. It's kind of interesting noting how the packaging is similar on both of these, yet different. Same goes for the Orbiter Only kit. And that concludes the 1970s portion of this trip, anyway.